Hello and good morning. Uh, my name is Radhika Longbottom and on behalf of all of my colleagues here this morning, I'd like to welcome you to our Student Wellbeing and Disability webinar. I will shortly go on to introduce you to each and every one of my colleagues, but before that, I'd like to quickly talk about some of the events that have taken place. Uh, so we've talked about student life, accommodation, sport, and a number of other support services that are available to both applicants as well as students who wish to join us at Queen's. Um, but following week, which is next week, we will also be looking at um, meeting some of our students from the student who will talk to you about the Students' Union. Uh, that webinar takes place on Tuesday at 11 o'clock and you are very welcome to book that webinar using, um, if you just search virtual events on our website under the undergraduate section, you should be able to find a registration form for that. Uh, but without further ado, I'd quickly like to introduce all of my colleagues who are here today to talk about disability and well-being. Um, in the middle, we have Raymond Miller. He is our chief. He is our Northern Ireland and um, Home Nations recruitment officer. Much like myself, I work in GB and we perform a very similar role in the sense that we go out to schools, visit students, teachers, advise them about both applying to Queen's and support students who have applied to us. I'll now pass on to my colleagues in the wellbeing and disability team. Will, would you like to start? Certainly. So my name is Will Plunkett. I'm a wellbeing advisor here at Queen's. Um, my role really is to support students with any wider wellbeing issues, and you'll hear about our supports in a little minute through our presentation. Um, I would encourage everyone, um, please, please hear about our service. Um, but if you take anything away, please just know that we're there for support throughout your studies. And we'd love to meet you at some stage and tell you about those supports in person. I'll pass over to Karen now. Yeah. Hi, I'm Karen Harview, and I'm one of the disability officers within the disability services team. Um, really, just to reflect what, what Will has already said, um, we hope we get you get a lot from this presentation. You'll get you know, lots of information about the types of things we do within disability service and, this, and the types of supports that are available. And we're very keen to hear from you. If you have any sort of questions or queries, please do, do ask us at the end. Um, we also have Alana here with us. Alana is a student uh, at Queen's and um, Alana, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. So I'm Alana Kern. Um, I'm a current PhD student at Queen's University in the School of Nursing and Midwifery. So I'm going to be talking to you today um, just about my academic journey with dyslexia and the different supports and things that I have got um, throughout um, my academic journey. Right. So um, we're all going to disappear from your screens uh, from a, for a brief while while we go through the presentation and then Alana's video. Um, after that, we will open the floor for questions. Uh, just to let you know that the questions that you ask today are, are completely private. So apart from uh, the presenters, nobody else gets to see them. So please rest assured and um, you know, feel free to ask us any questions that you might like. Um, so I shall now hand over to my colleague, Raymond. Okay, everybody, I'm just going to play uh, the presentation that the Disability and Wellbeing Services have kindly put together for us. So if you enjoy that, if you just sit back and enjoy, and like uh, Radhika says, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the end. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Student Disability and Wellbeing Services webinar. Today, we hope to provide you with an overview of the services we offer to students at Queen's, starting with information about disability services and then moving on to the Student Wellbeing Service. I'll start with an overview of the Disability Service at Queen's and talk to you about who we support how students register with the service and the types of supports available within the university, and also the external funded support that's available. I'll give you some, 
some background information about disability services and who we support. So currently we support over 2000 students with a variety of conditions, including those with physical disabilities and mobility difficulties, those with medical conditions such as epilepsy, heart conditions or diabetes, sensory impairments such as hearing and visual impairments, specific learning difficulties such as dyslexia or dyspraxia. And this would be one of our largest groups of students who, who actually register with the service. We also support students with mental health difficulties and that would often be depression and anxiety. There has been an increase in the number of students with diagnosed mental health conditions registering with disability services over recent years. And we work very closely with our colleagues within the Student Wellbeing Service to provide appropriate ongoing support for this group of students, including the offer of a RAP or a Wellness Recovery Action Plan when they first register with disability services. We also support students with autistic spectrum conditions and we, we facilitate and organise additional social and peer support opportunities for this particular group also. Please note that we do not support students who have short term or temporary impairments. OK, steps to register with disability services. We'll just give you an overview of that. Disclosing your disability is important, but deciding to disclose is very much a personal choice. We encourage applicants to disclose in their UCAS form or when they apply directly to the university because this enables students to access support as soon as possible. Many applicants think that disclosing their disability on their application will impact the decision of an offer, but this isn't the case. Offers are made on academic merit. Some students decide to disclose their disability when they commence their studies or during their course, and that's fine. Students can register at any point of their academic career. In order to register, you must complete an online questionnaire and provide evidence of your disability, your medical condition or your specific learning difficulty. You will need to provide a letter or medical report, depending on the nature of your condition. That might be a GP's report, report from a consultant or from a psychologist. For those with specific learning difficulties such as dyslexia, we would need a full diagnostic assessment report from a chartered psychologist or from a specialist teacher who holds a current practicing certificate in specific learning difficulty assessment. Now links to the questionnaire and further information about medical evidence can be found on the Disability Services website and further details will be provided at the very end of the presentation. So once you have completed your questionnaire and then have provided medical evidence, you will be invited for an appointment with the disability officer. For new students who are due to commence in the new academic year, appointments usually take place during the summer months, with the majority of them being around August time. Students will be assigned a disability officer who will discuss any in-course supports they may require, will make recommendations and will also advise on funded supports that may be available. The in-course supports that are recommended are communicated then via an individual student support agreement or an ISA for short, and that goes to specific staff within the student's academic school. There'll be a disability advisor within each school who will ensure that any support recommendations are communicated to the relevant teaching staff. The information regarding the student's disability is treated with the strict, strictest confidentiality and in line with GDPR and data protection. Disability officers can provide ongoing support for students and provide advice throughout their studies. Students are offered annual reassessment appointments, but we can review and update supports at any stage if a student's circumstances change at any point. Here are some examples of the type of supports that you may be recommended. Um, during your initial assessment with the disability officer. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list, but gives you an idea of the types of in-course supports on offer. All supports recommended will be dependent on the nature of your disability or your condition, and it will be tailored to your individual needs. So just to take a few examples there, within the teaching and learning environment, you may require some flexibility with deadlines or permission to record lectures, for example. And within the exams and assessment, side of things you may require maybe some extra time or rest breaks 
uh, or some consideration for spelling and grammar if you have a specific learning difficulty, specialist furniture if you have a physical disability, and the majority of our students who require additional support uh, during their exams will also be provided with a smaller venue. OK, moving on to some funded information about funded support and specifically about Disabled Students Alliance. Um, Disabled Students Alliance, or DSA for short, is a grant to help cover the extra costs that you may face as a direct result of your disability, your health condition or mental health condition or specific learning difficulty. If you're a resident in the UK and you can provide evidence of your condition, you may be entitled to this fund. It's not means tested. It doesn't need to be paid back and the equipment is usually used to keep after graduation. What it can provide would be things like specialist equipment and that could be specialist hardware or software or ergonomic furniture. It may provide non-medical helper support such as specialist tutors or mentoring support or assistance whilst you're on campus or within the library. The type of non-medical helper support recommended will really depend on your individual needs. At Queen's, we have our own registered support providers who can provide specialist support recommended through the fund, and the team can match you with suitably qualified support providers if this is a recommendation. The fund can also um, provide uh, help with consumables, such as photocopying allowances, ink and paper for your printer. And for those students who have a difficulty with using public transport as a result of their disability, they may be entitled to receive some assistance with covering extra travel expenses. So just to sort of guide you through the DSA application process, first of all, you need to complete a DSA-1 form and say further information and links to how to access a DSA-1 form and make an application will be available on our further information slide at the end of the presentation. But once you have the DSA-1 form completed, it needs to be sent to your funding body. And for the majority of students, this will be student finance, whether that be in England, Northern Ireland, Wales, or within Scotland. Some postgraduate students may be funded by a research council, and disability services can assist those students with their application. And for students who are from the Republic of Ireland, unfortunately, they are unable to apply for DSA, but they can apply for another fund um, through the HEA and disability services will help them make um, that application if needed. So if you're eligible for DSA, you will receive a confirmation letter from your funding body advising you that you're eligible and approving you to have a needs assessment. Now details of the needs assessment centre will be provided within the letter. Please note that Queen's also have a needs assessment centre based on campus. So if you do apply for DSA while you're living in Northern Ireland, it would be likely that you would be referred to the Queen's needs assessment centre. If you're living in the in GB, when you apply, you would often be referred to the most local needs assessment centre within your area. We recommend that you apply for DSA before starting your course. Applications for the new academic year usually open around about April, May time each year, so you can apply before you receive your results or your offer for place is confirmed. And this will enable you to have your needs assessment and for any fund support you require to be in place more quickly once you start your course. Tweaks can be made to a needs assessment if your choice of course changes. It can take a number of weeks for your funding body to assess your eligibility and to approve a needs assessment. And once an needs assessment has been completed, it can take on average six to eight weeks for the funding bodies to process the applications. The time frame will de be dependent on the time of year and if there are queries about the recommendations made. But on average, it could take around 14 weeks to complete and the process to complete the process and receive the equipment. If you require any further information about DSA or the process, please visit our website and also um, the gov.uk Disabled Students Alliance website. All the contact details will be provided at the very end of the presentation. And as you can see there, there's some, um, some contact details if you have any specific queries for our Needs Assessment Centre or our Register of Support Providers. I'm now going to hand you over to my colleague, Will, who's going to talk you, to you about the Student Wellbeing Service at Queen's. Thank you, Karen. So at Queen's as an institution, our aspiration is that every student leaves university confident 
that they have achieved their academic potential and are equipped to cope with the next phase of their life feeling connected and hopeful about the future. With this in mind, I want to tell you how the Student Wellbeing Service supports students in their journey. The following video outlines the range of support services we offer. As you go through your student journey, you will experience new things, interact with people from different cultures and have different expectations to manage from yourself and others. Some students cope well most of the time, others don't. You may struggle with your course, struggle to make friends, experience relationship difficulties, or have an addiction to alcohol or drugs that is impacting your ability to perform academically. You may be struggling with things in your personal life, such as a health condition, financial worries or family pressures. No matter what is going on, the important thing to remember is that help is available. Our student wellbeing team based in the Student Guidance Centre offers support to students through a variety of ways. We offer allocated one-to-one -one meetings with a wellbeing advisor to talk through your issue further. This includes specialist safe and healthy relationship advocates for support in relation to sexual misconduct, bullying, harassment or any form of hate crime for which Queen's has a zero tolerance policy. Students who have been affected by any of these issues can use the online system report and support to get more information and make a request for support from an advocate. We also provide access to self-help materials in the Student Guidance Centre and on our website. Can help book you into relevant workshops and events including our wellbeing on weekdays events that are open to all students. Refer you to counselling support. Offer a coaching service provide links to external support agencies when appropriate. Student Wellbeing work in partnership with Disability Services for students with disability or a long-term medical condition, ensuring all students receive adequate support during their time at Queen's. For information on supports available and how to register with Disability Services, please visit their website or email disability.office at qub.ac.uk So, how do students connect with us and get support? Disability and Wellbeing have a daily drop-in service during term time where students can speak with an advisor about their issues. We work out what support will suit you best and how to access this support. We are committed to supporting students to live well and be well. This commitment is underpinned by Queen's core values of respect, integrity, excellence, ambition and connected which keeps students at the heart of service planning development and design. Details of our service including drop-in times, how to make an appointment and our well-being on weekdays events can be found on our website. Make sure you keep up to date through our social media channels by searching for QUB As you can see, there are a wide range of supports. We offer an accessible, flexible and responsive service that is free to all students at the university. If you're not sure what support is best for you, the student wellbeing is a good starting point. You can speak with one of our wellbeing staff in a non-judgmental environment, through our drop-in or simply by getting in contact. We will listen to your issues or concerns and talk through suitable support options. If we feel you need counselling or support from an external service, we can discuss that with you. Our counselling service is run in partnership with Inspire, a local counselling organisation. Working with Inspire gives Queen's students access to a range of different clinical skills. Counselling is also a free service to our students. It is provided on a short, short term, brief, solution focused model normally between four to six sessions. Counselling staff are well trained, experienced and extremely committed to the work they do.
Students are gently challenged to face their problems, to set goals on how to achieve solutions to those problems and actively work towards those goals. As a service, we also deliver a range of workshops and events throughout the academic year. Events and workshops are based on what we find works well for students and on what students tell us they need. We offer wellbeing and weekday events where we focus on the take five model of support. Looking at being active, connecting, taking notice, giving and keep learning. Each week we run free activities like yoga, mindfulness, free lunches and much, much more. As Karen mentioned earlier, we also offer wraps or wellness recovery action plans. These are available to all students. It is an opportunity to sit down with students and help them identify ways to manage their mental well-being. This will include building wellness tools and looking at the activities that are important for ind individuals to do regularly to stay as well as possible. We also try to identify early warning signs that things may not be going well and help you create an action plan to identify the best supports to manage your well-being. By developing your wellness tools and putting in place an action plan for when times are difficult, you can be proactive in looking after your well-being and mental health. We all have a responsibility to manage our mental well-being and we are pleased to offer support such as wellness recovery action plans to support our students in doing so. As you can see, students come to our service for a wide range of reasons. If you're experiencing any difficulties or concerns, help is available. We use a step up model support to find the most appropriate support for students, no matter what they are experiencing. The university is committed to promoting a safe and supportive environment in which students grow in independence and which celebrates equality diversity and inclusivity. Here you can see some responses from students who have accessed our service. Students engage with our service at different points on their student journey. We know that each student journey will be different with a unique set of hopes, ambitions and needs. In order to respond to the full range of needs that will be experienced, we will work in partnership with students in ways which are empowering and which builds on your own resources and resilience. You're welcome to visit our website listed on the screen. And if you have any specific questions, you can email disability.office at qub.ac.uk or for wider wellbeing queries, student wellbeing. Well, thank you, Will and Karen, for that. Uh, I found it very, very useful, and I've obviously learned quite a lot of new things. Um, before we go on to the questions, uh, we have Alana Karn with us. Alana is a current student, and Alana is going to share her experience of using the Wellbeing and Disability Service here at Queen's. Hi everyone, and um, so hope everyone's staying safe and you're welcome to my little home makeshift office. Um, so I'm Alana Kern. I'm a current PhD student here um, at Queen's in the School of Nursing and Midwifery and I am dyslexic. So um, I'm delighted to have been asked by the Disability and Wellbeing Service team um, to kind of um, talk you through my experience as, as a dyslexic student at Queen's. Um, so I'm going to talk um, through kind of my journey um, with dyslexia and um, the my experience of kind of um, disclosing my dyslexia to disability services and the supports that I got through that and what I found really beneficial and then also a bit of advice for any current students or students um, that are considering coming to Queen's um, with dyslexia or any other disability. So um, the turning point for me um, was when I started at Queen. So I will talk you through um, through this um, and my journey in Queen's with dyslexia. 
So um, I, although I was never diagnosed, so I wasn't diagnosed with dyslexia until I came to Queen's. Um, but I did know from a young age that I was dyslexic. So on my UCAS form, I think I disclosed that I had dyslexia and the application form to the university. And then I was contacted by the link person in um, the Student Guidance Centre, which at that point was Gronia McGoldrick. Um, and my link person now there is um, Orla Kragan. So um, they were able to communicate me and kind of um, collaborate with me for specific dates and what um, the kind of timeline of, the, of them are. So I'll talk through um, a few of these supports that I found beneficial with throughout my journey at Queen's. So the first one, and I can't express enough how invaluable the support is, is the dyslexic tutor. So I have had two dyslexic tutors in my whole time at Queen's, um, Elaine and Janet. So um, what the dyslexic tutor does is that you can meet up with them, you can chat through um, your your you know your skills, your um, weaknesses, and your strengths, and you can kind of plan how you can um, make those your weaknesses better, or how you can apply your strengths. And um, then for specific things such as assignments, you know how to plan your assignment. What is the question? What's the question really asking? Um, and kind of breaking it down to help you um, help you answer it. Um, then um, going on. Um, I got extra time for exams and assignments. So in exams, I got 25% extra time. And then um, another thing that I got was recording devices. So at undergrad, um, I had like a kind of rectangular recording device, and then you could plug it in your computer and it kind of came up. Um, but now, which I think it was really, really beneficial to me, is this little pain. So, um, at the minute in my PhD now, I didn't have this at undergrad, but I would say it would be fabulous for undergrad too, especially for lectures and things. Um, I use it for supervision now, so um, this little cap comes off, so this is your pen. And in here there's like a little camera, I don't know if you can see it, but I write down on like a special notepad and it records too what's being said at that time when I'm writing them certain notes. And then I can just like kind of click on that notepad at that certain note and it plays out what is being spoken at that point. So um, if you're having a lecture, if you want to jot down a certain little note and then click on that and it comes up um, what the lecture was saying at that point. So this is a really good piece of technology to have. I, I really find it beneficial. Um, then I got a laptop and a printer too um, to be able to print. And on the laptop then um, I have specialized software. So we've got Read and Write Gold, um, which is a software um, that you kind of can convert um, PDFs to Word documents or it can read out your Word documents for you. So I use it a lot for um, if I want to read journals, I can take in what they're saying better listening. Um, so I can um, play that out and it um, reads the journal article for me. So that's what I use it for at the minute. Um, then another one which is fabulous and I love so so much, I just got it for my PhD, is Dragon Software. So it's a software and that has, I have this little kind of headset and um, everyone in my office kind of laughs at me and says I look like I work in a call centre <laughs> in my office but um, I speak into this and um, it types up what I speak. Um, so it's really, it's really, really good. Now it takes a little time to kind of, um, you know, train it, do your voice, um, but the technology is amazing. Um, so I use this for kind of um, any notes that I have, any thoughts that I have, if I'm writing up um, notes from a journal so I can be reading, um, my reading write goal can be reading out a journal and I have the Dragon software then that I can just kind of speak out what that's saying um, for certain notes and stuff. Um, or if you're writing up assignments or whatever too, you could use it for it. It's brilliant, really, really, really good. Um, and you get training for all of these um, different softwares and technologies. So really take the benefit of these if you do get them um, because um, you have to be able to use them effectively to get the best out of them. Um, so 
What I really want to highlight too is collaboration is key. This is my number one advice to anyone. So collaboration, collaboration with. So to identify that you have dyslexia, collaborate with the linked people, collaborate with the dyslexic assessors, the student guidance centre, your school um, within Queen's that you're going to. Um, really um, utilise the services um, that are there. It's an amazing service um, for anyone and everyone is so um, approachable and helpful. Um, another one that kind of um, has developed throughout um, my academic career is um, responsibility. So taking ownership um, of my own academic journey and my dyslexic journey. Um, so really um, how can you keep empowering yourself to better yourself, to keep going? I hope this has been helpful and please um, don't hesitate to ask me any questions in the Q&A and um, stay safe everyone. And this well, thank you very much, Alain, and obviously Thank you very, very much to Will and to Karen. Uh, that was really, really informative. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, open the Q&A session. So if anybody has any questions, please, please feel free to ask. So here's a question that I'd like to ask if that's okay, Will and Karen. Mm -hmm. um, so I, obviously I work in, in GB and uh, a number of the students that, uh, you know, apply to us would, uh, for example, apply to uh, their D for their DSA from, from England. Now these would be students who potentially would have declared their disability or would be aware of their disability. But what if, um, much like Alana, you, you come to university and then sort of get, you know, you want to get yourself assessed for say dyslexia. Um, what, what, do, what would be your advice for, for students who haven't officially been diagnosed, for example? Okay, if it's something like dyslexia, um, the best thing a student could do would be if they contact the disability service and uh, we can provide them with a list of approved assessors who can do a full um, assessment. Um, something basically would happen to Alana whenever she did come to, to university. Um, she always had that, she knew that she did have dyslexic difficulties, but they didn't have the sort of the official document. So we can help students um, set them up with an appointment. There's freelance assessors who will, will do that. There is a cost involved with that, um, but there is some help. There's some financial help and assistance available to, to help cover the cost um, of an assessment. So disability services will be able to advise students how they actually go about that process and, and put them in touch with the relevant people to get the assessment completed. Thank you for that, Karen. So um, the questions are coming in thick and fast now. Um, if you don't disclose your disability on UCAS, um, can you still make use of the services that you provide? You can. And what I'd sort of said in the presentation, there is an opportunity for people to disclose at any point of their, of their academic career. So if you haven't disclosed at UCAS stage, you can still online and fill in our online questionnaire and provide your medical evidence and that means then we will have your record as such and then we can make touch you know and get in contact with those individuals the reason obviously if you have applied um, and disclosed on UCAS we will get a list of all those students and we can make more direct contact with those students but that doesn't mean that those who haven't disclosed you know can't access the service they can do it just through a sort of a different channel Excellent, thank you. Um, another very good question. Uh, once you have disclosed that you have a disability on your UCAS form, what are the next steps you need to take to avail of the additional support available at Queen's? Okay, well, we're actually in the process at the moment of 
receiving lists from our admissions office um, in relation to all those who have disclosed. And what will happen next is that students will receive, or applicants, should I say, will receive some communication from ourselves, which will highlight what they need to do next. And really what that will be is to go on to our online questionnaire, complete that, provide the medical evidence. And once we receive that, then we will be inviting students for an appointment um, with a disability officer. And that's really how the process will begin. Um, there'll be an initial assessment with the disability officer and all the supports that the student will require will be discussed at that point and information then will be sent on to the relevant academic school. So really the most important thing is, is getting the online questionnaire and the medical evidence submitted to us and that really will get the ball rolling and get the, the appointment set up. Now, we won't be doing assessments for sort of the new intake quite yet, um, but that will be more um, during the summer months. Um, some students may be contacted before sort of the results or confirmation of a place, of a place is given. So um, we, we do start usually around about July, August time in providing and, and, and contacting students about appointments. Um, and just, just a further question from me, Karen. So uh, with, with the current situation being as it is, um, I, have you got any plans to sort of get over the the assess the face to face maybe contact? Um, would you like to maybe share those if they are available? If yep. not, yeah, we're still here. We're still working. Um, it is, obviously it is remote at, at the moment, and we will continue to provide appointments, but it will be remotely until further notice, until we get further guidance. Um, obviously, you want everyone to be to be kept safe. Um, so. What we will be promoting is contacting or students making contact with us via um, Teams, Microsoft Teams. Um, so that's what we would be hoping going forward, how we would actually do assessments. And that allow us, you know, obviously to have the video on and to have some face-to-face -face contact with students, because I think that's that's quite important. Exactly. Um, rather than just over the phone. But obviously it will be um, the, the student or the applicant's choice as well. If it's something that they're not, you know, um, comfortable with doing, we'll certainly look at different ways in which we, we can assess those students, which, which meets their particular needs. Thank you, Karen. Uh, the next question is, uh, how often can I meet with an officer if I'm feeling anxious? Okay. Um, I suppose it all depends what the, the nature of the of the query would be. Um, it may be that um, if it's a, a general query about maybe their, their academic um, academic situation, it could be resolved quite quickly through their disability officer. But if it's something maybe we maybe longer term or something that maybe needs a wee bit more input, we would often refer to the likes of Will, who is one of the, the student wellbeing advisors, um, for some additional support. So Will, maybe you would want to talk about maybe what you would do in that situation if a student has, yeah. you know, maybe issues with anxiety. Absolutely. So with regards to, you know, touching bases, um, we have our drop-in, which runs on a daily basis at the moment, that's 11 to 3. Um, so there's always an opportunity just to pop in and, and say hello and talk to our wellbeing advisors. At that point, they may be able to resolve the issue. They may be able to talk through some different coping mechanisms and relieve some anxieties, or they may refer you in to have a bit of a longer session with myself. And um, that's, you know, and that's sometimes where the likes of, I mentioned RAPS in my presentation, those wellness recovery action plans. Those are really good. And we encourage students to do those right at the start of their journey. Um, but as Karen said, you know, at any point if you feel you need to avail of our services, you're very welcome to come in and, and do so. Um, but those are the kind of things that we can start to equip students to be proactive in managing their well-being. Um, so we can look at that. We can try to identify what helps you when you feel anxious. Who can you go to? Who can you talk to? And what activities can you do to relieve some of that anxiety? So those are, are things we can put in place to support students on an ongoing basis. Um, but they're always welcome to come to a drop-in. Um, if students are feeling anxious a particular week, they're welcome to come every day and come speak to us. Um, as I said, if we're doing longer work, we may invite them in for a one-to-one -one session with someone like myself or one of the other wellbeing advisors. Or indeed, we may refer them on to counselling and um, to work on some sort of some work around that, around self-esteem and, and different areas, depending on, on what the concern is. Um, my advice would be, come and see us whenever you feel anxious, when you have any worry. It's never, you'll never be turned away. Um, your concern or your difficulty will never be considered too small or indeed too big. Um, so please come speak to us um, at any point. 
and we will we'll get the right supports in place. I might speak with Karen if it's around your support, or I might refer on to counselling, or it might be something we just chat through and we try to identify how we best support you in that environment. Thank you, Will. That was, uh, that was very reassuring. Thank you. Um, the next question I have is very specific. I have a ligament tear, which, uh, which I thought doesn't hurt me regularly, but sometimes I need a bit of help. Is, is that something that, that we can help out with? I suppose it all depends if it's a long term issue. Um, really what we would class as a long term issue or a disability would be a condition that lasts for 12 months or more or likely to last. So I suppose it all depends really on, on the timeline, whether it's going to be short term, which you will recover from, or if there's actually going to be long term damage there, which causes further difficulties in your day to day life. So it, it really would depend on those type of factors. Thank you, Karen. Um, Alana, the next one's for you. Um, did you feel nervous about using the disability services? Um, I think the unknown of what kind of support that you would get is always, you always are kind of nervous in terms of that. But um, everyone was so supportive and kind of guided you through the whole process. And um, no, after that, um, it was really plain sailing for me. It was great. Just um, as I said in my video collaboration, just so everyone just made it so much easier. So it, it's nice to hear such positive feedback. I'm sure Karen and Bill are feeling uh, quite pleased. But uh, the next question also is is uh, for you, Alana. Uh, have you ever met another student with the same disability as as, as yourself? Yeah, there's loads. Um, so anytime we were doing tests for me specifically, there was maybe about six of us all together. So we kind of had a real network and um, understood each other. And it was really great support. And then also to, um, you know, people who maybe think they are dyslexic as they go through their um, their academics, so undergraduate, and then they find out later on throughout the process. That's also an experience that I've had. So it's all about kind of connecting with those people too, and you really support each other throughout that journey. Well, that's lovely. Thank you, Alana. Um, another question that I have is, would I be able to access the support service for tinnitus? Am I, am I pronouncing it correct? Yeah. Is it correct? Yeah. Yeah, tinnitus is a, is a type of hearing impairment. Hearing, that's right. Yep, yeah. yep. And certainly that would be, it's a long-term condition. Certainly um, you should contact the disability services and we'll be able to, to um, look at any supports that you, that you may require. And uh, uh, again, assuming, Karen, that this is an, an applicant, they would, they would do well to declare it as a disability yeah. on they, their UCAS form? Yeah, within UCAS, um, that would come under, I suppose, hearing impairment, which, so that's probably the best way to, to classify that particular mm -hmm. um, condition. And, and if, they are, um, if they are an applicant and they haven't done it, how do mm -hmm. they get around that? So if, if, if this is the first time they found out about mm. the, the process, so to speak. Yeah. Well, if they can't get back into UCAS and make the the um, the declaration sort of at this stage, you can still just go through directly through disability services by filling in the questionnaire um, that we have, the online questionnaire and providing evidence. The important thing is, is that we do need evidence of a condition and say all the information if you look at our website the information's there and there's guidelines there of what type of evidence that we would require um in order for us to put support in place so we will will only really be seeing students or be able to offer an appointment if we have all that information available to us it's very difficult to do an assessment if we don't have all the information so that's why it's really important to have the, the medical evidence and things available i know this it can be difficult maybe to get that especially how things you know are at the minute but there's still plenty of time. So maybe even now, if you're thinking, mm, I, I think I might need support um, from disability services for the, for the new academic year, is making inquiries now with GPs, or if you have a consultant, whatever, to try and get that evidence in place, because it may take a wee bit longer just due to the, the current situation. Yeah. Well, I, oh, there's another one. Um, 
is there well-being support in Queen's accommodation? Absolutely. So our service is obviously available to all students, but we work very closely with our staff and accommodation. So if a student is having a difficult time, um, we will work alongside our colleagues in accommodation to, to offer support there. So they may check in with students, see how they're doing on a daily basis. Um, they will refer students to the Student Wellbeing Service. And likewise, we will speak with the accommodation and, and get them to sort of even just help a student fit in sometimes, you know, um, I suppose one of the, the myths of university is that, you know, we look at our, our friends and other universities and we think everything goes well all the time. And sometimes it doesn't. Um, and that's OK. And so sometimes just case of getting some help to fit in or meet friends. And that's what our colleagues in accommodation are very good at. You know, they run a lot of activities and um, there's always someone there and um, there's security 24 seven. But there's staff called um, residential assistants who are really, you know, people you can talk to about any difficulties you're experiencing, either within accommodation or otherwise. And um, at that point, they may send you to come down and speak with myself or another wellbeing advisor to talk through the many different supports. Um, and I suppose that is the thing, again, another sort of common uh, misunderstanding about university is that it's completely independent. And, you know, university, it's a great opportunity to go and, and live away from home and to meet new people and to study something you love and to have all these great experiences. But we don't expect you to do that alone. Um, so we have lots of support within accommodation. You have support from your lecturers and your tutors. You have support from you know Karen and her team around your disability, and of course ourselves around well-being. So that's what I would say is um, you know university is a wonderful experience, but please use all the supports around you. And we don't expect you to do it alone. Um, and we will work within the university and the different departments to find the best way of supporting you and the best way of getting you the experience that you get the most out of and that you enjoy and that you have fun and you go away hopefully having a, a positive experience well well i think you've summed everything up for me very very nicely there and uh i just really want to reiterate that um you know exactly what what will has has so eloquently put there probably better than i ever would uh but Really, it's just to say to all of you out there that are either considering applying to Queen's or have already applied and just need a little bit of reassurance. We're all here to help you. We're all here to support you. And we are very much looking forward to welcoming you on campus. Um, I just want to say a big, big thanks to, to Will and to Karen to, to come in and talk to our students about well-being and disability. I want to also thank Alana. You know, it, it can't be easy coming out there and, and talking about uh, sort of your disability in and, and then, you know, accepting that um, there is support available and that you need to work with other people to, to get that support. Uh, but I think it's great that you've got a, a fantastic support network and you're all um, sort of, you know, talking about it and, and doing something about it. Um, so on behalf of all the presenters, I just want to say thank you very much, uh, including Raymond, who's hidden himself away. Uh, thank you very much for, for taking part in this presentation. Um, as I said at the beginning, this is uh, one in, in a series of student life and student support webinars that we are running for our uh, potential applicants as well as um, prospective students. We do understand that this is a very, very difficult time. Um, and I just want to reiterate that we're here to help and to support. Our next webinar in the Student Life series is uh, next week. It's on Tuesday at 11 a.m. and it's on the Students' Union. And if you would like to register for the, the webinar, as I said at the start, all you need to do is look for virtual events on our website, just search it and you should be able to get a registration form for it. So once again, thank you everyone, both attendees as well as presenters, and uh, I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.